Okay, my friends, I'm Kate Silver, and here are top 10 Adobe InDesign tips that every beginner and designer should know. Top Adobe InDesign tip number one is customizing workspace. Now, what is a workspace? So in Adobe language, a workspace is like a virtual desk where you get to choose which equipment and tools you would like to have on display. And in terms of Adobe InDesign, you get to choose which panels you would like to have on display. Now there's a series of existing default workspaces that you can choose from. I personally like to choose a typography workspace because it has the most amount of panels available that I would need. So one of the first things that I do when I open or create an InDesign document is I choose the typography workspace. And then I go and add additional panels to that workspace, more panels that I would personally need. And then I would save it as my own personal customized workspace, usually call it Kate's desk or something like that. So that's super useful. I definitely recommend. Now, another useful trick in Adobe InDesign in terms of workspaces is something called reset workspace or reset typography. Now, oftentimes throughout your work in Adobe InDesign, you might click and drag and drop panels all over the shop and your InDesign document and your InDesign interface might look quite messy. Or worse, you might accidentally close an InDesign panel that you might need and then freak out like, where is it? Well, don't freak out. Instead, just press reset typography or reset workspace. And this will magically pop all the panels beautifully in their place, creating a really tidy workspace again, which is very satisfying. So I love oftentimes resetting my workspace. So that was top Adobe InDesign tip number one. Moving on to top Adobe InDesign tip number two, and that is mastering keyboard shortcuts. So if you know me and the way I teach, I love shortcuts. I just love a good old shortcut just to enhance and speed up our process, to make everything run smoother and faster, because I know that we live in a society where we're quite time poor. So any shortcuts, any improvement of time is great. So I will give you a bunch of Adobe InDesign shortcuts right now that are very useful. So it's always a good idea to always go back to the selection tool. And therefore, the very important selection tool, the shortcut for that is V for very important. Another useful shortcuts that I tend to use very often is for placing images. And that is command or control D. Because we're placing a lot of images throughout our InDesign process. So it's a really good one to remember and will save you ample time. Another useful shortcut that I personally use is for print preview. And that is W. Now, I often revert from print preview to work mode to print preview and press W a bunch of times because I find it really important to have a little sneak peek at what my document would look like with all the hideous, without all the hideous Adobe InDesign guides and lines. I quite like to look and have a peek at how my document would actually look like printed. Now, if you are curious about a lot more useful Adobe InDesign shortcuts, then you're in luck because I've compiled a list of all the super useful Adobe InDesign shortcuts, both for Macs and PCs. And it's free if you sign up to my Adobe InDesign course, my beginners or my advanced course. And throughout that course, I bang on and repeat the shortcuts over and over and over again. So eventually my students will know all the shortcuts by heart, whether they like it or not. So yeah, that was top tip number two. Top Adobe InDesign tip number three is using parent pages, AKA master pages. 
So parent pages, which used to be called master pages, is really useful for consistency in a document. It's basically a template that allows you to repeat elements that will appear on every single page. So for instance, let's say you would like a page number on every page, a logo, a header, a footer, an image. So what you would do is add all these elements to a parent page or a master page, which is a template, and it will magically get applied to the whole document, which is amazing. So use those parent pages. Top Adobe InDesign tip number four is using paragraph and character styles. Now, speaking of consistency and templates, you also have Adobe InDesign text templates. And these are called paragraph and character styles. And they're basically templates for text formatting. So let's say you want all your headings to look a certain way. So you would design your heading and then create a template or a paragraph style from that. And then you can neatly apply it to all the headings in a document. And you can do that for every single text formatting style, for headings, for subheadings, for body text, for hyperlink and much more. So I, I definitely recommend using paragraph styles to ensure consistency with text and again, this will save you a lot of time for text formatting, which is awesome. Moving on to top Adobe InDesign tip number five, and that is the use of text wrap. I love text wrap. Text wrap is gorgeous. Text wrap allows you to neatly and beautifully wrap text around images, giving you that professional aesthetic and magazine-y look. And I do allow my students to practice a bunch of times text wrap inside my exercises, my practice exercises in my Adobe InDesign courses. So check it out if you would like to learn how to practice text wrap. Moving on to top tip number six, and that is making grids, AKA Gridify, such a cool name. So making grids in Adobe InDesign really enhances your layouts. You can easily make grids with Gridify and ensure that you have exact spacing between your text, between your objects and your images, and it looks great. This is another skill that gets practiced a lot in my courses, in my practice exercises. I think it's really great to use grids to create those gorgeous layouts throughout your document. So definitely recommend using those. Top Adobe InDesign tip number seven is aligning with smart guides and the align tool. Now, I really think that in Adobe InDesign, it's super important to have your objects and your text and your images neatly aligned. One of the first things I look at when I see flyers or posters is whether objects are aligned. And I think this determines whether it's professional or not. And in Adobe InDesign, you have two align tools. You've got smart guides and the actual align panel. Now with smart guides, they're basically guides and lines that appear every time you move an object, every time an object gets aligned to another object, then these smart guides will appear, telling you they're aligned. They also appear when you have equal spacing between your objects. Now, alternatively, you could also use the Align panel, which is similar to Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, where you also have the Align panel. And with the Align panel, you have to select your objects and then click on one of the functions in the Align panel and it will align your objects automatically accordingly. Top Adobe InDesign tip number eight is efficiently selecting content and containers. So one of the things I see beginners and students get most frustrated and irritated with in Adobe InDesign, it's selecting. Selecting, selecting, selecting. And I often see that students struggle 
they struggle to find how to select an object correctly. Are they selecting the containers or the grid? And so that is why early on in my Adobe InDesign beginners course, I really make sure that my students have the foundation of selection right, that they feel comfortable with it because it will save them a lot of headache because there's a lot of steps involved in selecting properly. First of all, every object in InDesign is inside a container. And with selecting, you can either select the container itself, you can select the content inside a container, or you can select both the content and the container and move that together. So there's a lot of variations and this could determine how fluent your InDesign process will be. So make sure you have that foundation of selection right. Okay, moving on to top Adobe InDesign tip number nine, and that is using bleed lines. And yes, that rhymes. So a bleed line is an allowance. So if you want your images to bleed over the page or to align to the edge of the page when printed, you will have to use bleed lines. And a bleed line is like a red line, like an allowance, which you have to align your graphics to. And the way to do this is at the very start of your creation of your new document, you're going to have to add a bleed line. Throughout the process of your document, you're going to have to align your images and graphics to that red line, to the bleed line. And then when exporting your document for printing only, you're going to have to tick a box that says include printer's marks and include bleed line, and then you'll be ready to go. So use those bleed lines for printing purposes if you want your images to align to the edge of the page, like for a cover page of a book. And last but not least, number 10 is efficient saving and packaging. Now I will give you three steps for saving efficiently. The first step is to make sure that you save an Adobe InDesign document, a working file that you'll always be able to edit and work on. And that is in the INDD format. The second step is to make sure that all those files and images and logos that you place in your Adobe document, that you place it neatly in a folder, that you don't move them, you don't rename them, and this will allow you to avoid to have missing links or blurred or pixelated images, which is a no-no. And then the final step for saving is to make sure you package your InDesign document. And this means that InDesign will package or create a folder of every single element that is in your InDesign document. You're going to have your links, your images, your fonts, and much more. And there's going to be a specific folder for each of them, which is great. So make sure to save it efficiently. Now, something that I personally do throughout my Adobe process is I regularly save my documents using the shortcut. So I'll oftentimes press Command or Control S ever so often, every time I, I do a new skill, because I really don't want my computer to crash and then having my work lost in vain. I want to make sure that no matter what happened, it's saved, it's there, and there we go. Now for a bonus tip, and that is practice, practice, practice. Now, I really believe in the power of repetition and practice in order to perfect a skill, or in this case, in order to learn a language, an Adobe language. And I really see in my students that throughout their practices and using my practice exercises, they become a lot more comfortable and fluent. And that is exactly why I created two courses, Adobe InDesign Beginners and Advanced Courses, where I give a lot of practice exercises and free templates. And I, re I repeat shortcuts all the time. And I give a free shortcut sheet because I really want my students to practice and for it to become second nature. And it's kind of like riding a bicycle, isn't it? So make sure to click on the link below to head to my beginners or advanced courses, depending on your Adobe InDesign skill level. Now, 
I would love to know which one was your personal favorite Adobe InDesign tip. Or if I didn't mention it, then please write it in a comment section below because maybe we can learn from you as well. Sharing is caring and let's share the information, all the InDesign tips and tricks. And voila, that was it for 10 Adobe InDesign tips that every designer and beginner should know. Now feel free to subscribe to this channel for more Adobe tutorials by me, Kate Silver, a top teacher and graphic designer. And I look forward to seeing you again. And voila, see you soon. Thank you.